in a rush. Val does air skiing and snowboarding for Atari Jaguar. It's the game you'd buy after having blown $200 on the console itself and can't justify spending another hundred for Tempest or Alien vs. Predator or any other game that drew your attention to said console in the first place. I'm not saying it's a bad game, no, though it ain't the milkshake that brings all the boys to the yard, if you know what I mean. Well, your insight is shattering. Okay, for me, video games serve as wish fulfillment. I wish I were a badass beating up palette-swapped enemies or blowing shit up in my Tomcat. Never have I ever wished to ski or snowboard. Aside from the expense, I'm fairly certain I'd break every bone in my body upon my first attempt. I doubt even language lessons would entice me to, well, on second thought. Anyway, of all the cheap games available for the platform, Val Desire isn't a bad choice. You get three play options, namely free ride, training, and competition. Nothing earth shattering, though adequate. Decent selection of button layouts available, multiplayer, and this game was made by Virtual Studio. I mention this because the game does often select play on the main menu, logo, finish a course, and logo. You can't miss it, not even when reading your stats. Move on to another course and the logo again. This isn't a complaint so much as a curiosity. Initially, I didn't care for this because I only ever played free ride and I just couldn't get a feel for it. The control is fine, but these courses are just so white, it is almost indistinguishable from the landscape. I get that these arrows will appear to keep you honest, but it doesn't look as if I'm staying the course. Dealing with this while avoiding rocks, icy patches, snow plows, and skate happy dipshits got me thinking I should have reviewed Dino Dudes instead. However, wanting to be thorough, I tried competition. Hey, these flags help a lot. So much, in fact, I was enjoying myself almost instantly. Not fretting over boundaries, I was able to concentrate on obstacles and lose myself to these rad tunes. Yeah, can you feel it in your testicles? Because I can feel it in my testicles. Tentacles. N T. Tentacles. Ah, uh, tentacles. A big difference. <laughs> As for differences between the skis and board, they're not major, but I found myself handling the board with greater ease. That and it looks cool when I perform some wicked jumps. I understand why some players may choose Val Desire over Paleolithic Man attempting human ladders, especially if you're new to the platform. When getting into a new console, uh, new to me at least, it's like going on your first date. You don't quite know what to expect, hell, you're surprised they even said yes. You want to find some common ground, or a port. Failing that, something that reminds you of Someone familiar, like, like this looks like something that could have been released on Super Nintendo or even Sega CD. That comparison breeds familiarity, which brings a sense of comfort, allowing your meal to properly digest so you won't fart your way home after the date comes to the inevitable conclusion. You had fun, and they're nice enough, but there's no spark. That's how I feel about Val Desire. It's not a bad game. The graphics are pleasant with a smooth frame rate. Control is responsive. Fucking love the music. Still, it's not really my thing. Diverting, though nothing that will make you want to call out from work. Of course, it won't satisfy those that ask, does it push the hardware though? Does it look 64-bit? That doesn't look 64-bit. This looks like a SNES game. I bet they only use 68K like everyone else. I know because I watch Slopes. I watch Top Twat Gaming, man. I know what I can do. Hush! Hush! 